this is Stacia, and we are going to look at a training game that I played on chess.com. So I just finished this game. I just, or I'm sorry, it's not on chess.com. I actually chose to play on Lee Chess. It was just a 10 plus 5 game, and the point of this game is we want to learn. So let's go ahead and dig into it. So it went e4, e5, knight to f3, knight c6, bishop c4. We have the Italian game and my opponent played bishop to c5. Now, my normal move is b4, I like Evan's gambit, but I decided to go ahead and play the main move c3 here, and my opponent played knight to f6. So in this position, um, I went d4, because that's sort of why you're going c3, and then after takes, I take back, attacking the bishop, they check, which is correct, and now I went knight to c3. So I'm aiming for a molar attack here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the molar attack video uh, on my channel. It's recent. It'll explain exactly what the plan is here. <laughs> All right. And so here I'm offering a pawn, right? They could take on e4, and I would just castle in this position. And then the main line of the mora, or <laughs> the mora, the molar, continues with bishop takes, not knight takes. And then here, you can't really take back. You have to play d5. And this can get pretty uh, crazy, actually. Like, I think the main move now is bishop f6. And after that, um, I think we don't even take back. Am I right about that? I think we don't take back. I think we pin this knight. They can save this one. And then we can play rook takes e4, because now it's time to get our piece back, right? We were down a piece. <laughs> and then after that, um, pretty sure they play d6 to stop us from playing d6. And then from here, I think there's two main moves. If I'm not mistaken, there's bishop g5, and I also would play rook f4. So let me just check, since we want to learn, might as well review. Yeah, I like the rook f4 move. We actually do intend to play rook takes f6. It's kind of funny, but it's a real move. And uh, bishop g5 goes into the main line. This pretty much forces them to capture. Knight takes g5. And now they cast. They can castle here, um, which gets crazy. But h6 first, um, queen e2. We ignore the attack on the knight and simply get ready to triple stack on the e-file and then they do take the knight we triple stack this is the main line of the molar attack theory and then bishop e6 okay anyway um bishop e6 stops you know it gives away a bishop but what do you do <laughs> so anyway uh i don't want to bore you guys too much that's the entire main line uh well it goes a lot further actually so all right castles in my game they did not take the pawn. They decided to castle first. So I was already in a new position here, and I can see now that there's no master games with this move. So I did kind of feel like my position was good after this. So I went e5, and I'm hoping this is the correct move. I think if I just go um, castles, I think maybe they could play d5 or something. Or if I castle, maybe because they, they could just take here, right? So I'm going to analyze this. So if castles, I would be worried about this move. And then maybe they really can take here. And now here comes d5. And I think I'm worse. So let's see what the engine says. Uh, nope, I was wrong. <laughs> we have one move here, and that's the move d5. We can still play d5 ourselves, stopping their d5. Wow. Okay. I didn't expect that. So now this knight can't live here. So now I do understand why that's powerful. And now the best move for them would be knight a5, attack my bishop. I could move, and then f5 could be played by black. This isn't what they want to do. They're doing this because they don't have d5. Um, and then we get to play d6. Wow. And then I would assume they take it, and then rook e1. We still get initiative here. Wow. In fact, we're two pawns down. Um, and this is still full compensation. 
That's amazing. I've never seen that. <laughs> okay, so that came from if castles and bishop takes. So I just learned something because I did look at this briefly and I thought this is just bad is what I thought, like rook e1 and d5. And am I right that this is bad? It is. Okay, so I was right that this is bad, but I missed this d5 move. That's nice. Okay, so that's cool. So that d5 resources there. Now in that game, I went e5, which I thought was probably the best move, and it is not the best move. So it looks like we have other moves here that are better. Bishop g5 and castles and d5 are all better. Wow. Um, so I don't understand this position. So this is great. We're going to learn a little bit. Um, the problem with e5 is what? d5 by black. Yeah, I didn't think about that. So always this d5 move is a strong move for black. That's what I'm learning. And the reason is pretty clear, right? If you played bishop c4, then why would you want a pawn thrusted in your bishop's face? <laughs> and also, if you take on passant, I mean, I'm assuming it's playable. I guess not that playable. Um, the problem with that is, you know, we spent time getting this pawn on e5, and it was even attacking the knight. So why are we just trading it off now? You know, they can even play queen takes d6, getting a new piece in the game. Yeah, I do kind of like black here. And black is definitely even a little better, according to the engine. Okay, so I'm learning a lot. Let's go back. Um, so in the game, knight c3, castles and e5 was wrong. So let's see why the other moves are stronger. The main move was bishop g5 by the computer. Hmm. I actually like it a lot. It's a very simple move. It's like they were about to take our pawn or they were going to um, trade and then take the pawn. And we're just simply pinning that knight. And in addition to that, now e5 is a threat. So bishop g5 comes with tempo and stops their threat. I would assume h6 here. Let's see. Yep, h6. Okay. And I would keep the pin. And I guess we're asking them now <coughs> if they want to go g5. Like, are they really going to go g5? Because if they go g5, we just might play knight takes g5. And then the threat of e5 remains. Like, for example, let's say this. And they take, I think this is looking good for us. I want to go e5 next. And how do they really stop? Oh, actually, I'm wrong. I bet they could do this. I bet they could play that. And then I'm sad. So I don't like that whole thing. I bet black's winning. Let's see. I was wrong. White's winning again. Wow. So there's some uh, there's some new ways to play with the initiative in these types of positions that I'm not familiar with, apparently. Looks like even on this, we play e5 anyway. I'm really curious about that. All right. I mean, why? Why is that a big deal? Mostly because the knight has nowhere good to go. And our queen's coming in. Oh, it's mostly the fact that our queen's coming in. And this pawn is pinned. Wow. So, like, let's say they go knight e8. I'm not saying that's a good move, but... So we actually trade, which I... When I see lines like this, I'm like, why am I trading? But now it's our turn, and that king isn't looking so great. So we just play queen g4. Yeah, they never had time to play d6 or d5. So queen g4 is available. And, yeah, the pin on the f7 pawn... That's pretty brutal. So they can't really do much, right? We're just going to follow them. And then every time, like if they come back here, we get this. And then, hmm, I'm not sure where we go from here, actually. Yeah, computer says that's wrong. Computer says we go knight d5 now. Knight d5. I think to play here and threaten that. And, yeah, because there's no f5. The pawn is pinned. They can't play f5 to get more defense, although it does give d5 here. Oh, I just realized. You guys probably saw. I'm supposed to play knight d5. Look, again, with the idea of stopping d5, because if you play knight e4, which looked more natural to me, there's d5. 
And even though that's a free pawn, it gains a valuable tempo. The bishop's now open. Um, so we could take, but then, oh, look, already there's a check. Yeah, I, the white position is starting to crumble a little bit. We have to go king f1, but maybe they take, um, take something. There's stuff they can take. It says, no, we go queen b5 check. Oh, that's a fork. And it turns out that's the best we had. We have to let them take it. And then queen g5 check. And now I'm guessing that this is just perpetual. Because um, otherwise we're losing, right? We're, we're losing. So now we just come in and that should be a draw. Okay. Um, all right, let's go back. I think we learned something there. Definitely that stopping that d5 idea is quite strong. So I learned that bishop g5 is a better move. So I'll be playing that in the future. Uh, but I went e5, and this is a bit inaccurate, I would say. It's a bit inaccurate. Um, so they went knight to d4 here. Or I'm sorry, knight e4. And I castled, and I'm saying go ahead and sack. And they do. Or I'm saying go ahead and take. Um, so let's see what the engine says about these moves. On e5, yeah, d5 is the best move for black. But they went here. Castles is best. I am wondering if they could go d5 here. I guess not. I'd probably just take it, right? If they go d5 now, I just take it. Because I'm not pinned anymore. So they took here. And yeah, they went upon. And this reminds me of the Muller attack lines because this bishop often comes here and they went upon and they're attacking our rook. Looks like we should just move our rook. Except I'm never going to do that. But now I'm really sad because I didn't find the right move in this position. I looked at knight g5, which I see is just winning, and I ruled it out. So let's see if I can remember what I thought during the game. I thought knight g5, and they would play h6. And what do I do? I actually calculated this, bishop a3, and then I thought maybe they go here, and I take here. And then I thought they take this, and like, I can't take back and save my knight. So you can see my concern. Computer says we are winning, bishop f7. Yeah, we do have bishop f7 here. Is this really winning? This is forced. Wow, now we can play queen h5 because now the h pawn will be pinned. That actually looks really good. That's protected. Yeah, this looks really good. And it is. They can play knight e7 and white's better here because now we do have time to take the bishop. Okay, so I didn't see all that. Um, after knight to g5, um, if they take, we play queen h5. This I saw because this, this is a common Muller attack. It probably transposes into Muller attack, basically. So, yeah, it does. I'm pretty sure it's the exact position. So, I wasn't too concerned about that move. I was concerned about h6, though. And turns out we can just play knight f7 right now. Wow, that is cool. Um, yeah, and if here, we just simply take apparently, and if here, guess what? We can now play queen, I was gonna say queen f3, but also queen b3. Um, both are going to be forks, and pick up the bishop on c3. And then, we're just up material and winning, so. Wow, lots of themes. I did not see a lot this game, so I'm actually really glad to be analyzing it. It's a lot of good stuff. I instead went bishop a3. I had a bad feeling about this move after I played it because I'm like, well, how am I ever going to go knight g5 now? And I think that is, in fact, true. They played here, which I thought was a little weird because now I take it, and I feel like their knight is a little bit 
I'm going to turn the engine off. So now it's a little bit off sides here. Um, and I thought even queen b3 comes with tempo, or maybe I want to do something else. But So I chose queen b3. I guess I did. I thought this is strong here. Why did I think that? Oh, because I thought I had knight g5 coming. But, you know, I kind of forgot that my bishop's not there anymore. So I don't. <laughs> yeah. So I could have played d5 was a better move here. d5, taking space, I guess. Well, I think the main idea is to take that square away from this knight and, like, almost trap it. I think that's the main idea. So they should go b5, I guess, which gives up a pawn for no reason. Um, d6 is also a move. If d6... Queen d2, we tech the knight, and then a5, and then a3, and then probably knight a6. Yep, the knight's going to reappear on the c5 square. It's a good place. And then we go e6. I would assume they want to take. And then take. And this pawn's very strong, and we're threatening check. And okay, queen e7 to stop that. The game goes on, but white has an advantage here. I kind of see that white has an advantage now. Yeah, I'm learning a lot. I, a lot of these themes are kind of newish to me. Um, they went knight c6 in the game, which feels kind of slow. And also, I was like, well, I guess they want to go knight a5. But then they're moving their knight a lot. So I just went h4. Yeah, I wanted to play knight g5. So, you know, here. And they stopped it with h6. But that's a weakening move. Um, so I played queen d3. And I decided to play like a beginner. They went g6, and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to build the battery like every single 800 ever and checkmate you on h7. So, I mean, hey, it's a beginner plan, but it's also like often good. So I did that. It applies pressure, right? Now they have to play g6, weakening their king a bit. Queen to d2, let's just tickle them here. Uh, they said, I'm not ticklish. I said, yes, you are. Then I went bishop e4. I really liked the idea of this pin. I was thinking about playing for this earlier as well. Queen e7. I'll probably just show the rest of the game now. Um, rook a to c1. I just wanted to uh, add more pressure down the c file on the pin knight. They brought their rook in. I went rook f e1. Knight a5. So they're just trying to untangle here, use the knight to actually protect the bishop. But I could take and win the pawn, so I did that. They went knight to a5. I was like, hey, I'll take a pawn. Why not? My position's really nice. And sure enough, white is doing well. I went back to c7. Queen to e6. And yeah, this is a blunder, I do believe, because uh, how about d5? So remember... Just like in real life, <laughs> never walk into a fork. Ouchies. And I think I end the game pretty convincingly. They move their queen there. Of course, I take the material. They take, oh no, my queen. Um, yeah, I just move it. And I liked the square a lot. Not only am I threatening to take a pawn, but I'm threatening discoveries. So they kind of have to deal with that. So they go here and now e6. I like this move e6. They didn't even see my idea because they cannot take that. But they did take it, and that means that opens up the rook. Checkmate. So pretty happy with the game. Um, I think if we run the full computer analysis, I think I'll be pretty happy. I don't think I played precisely, but I think I played all right for a 10-minute game. Definitely learned some things from it. And um, let's see, is that, ooh, here it is. Here's our graph. I was never really in trouble. Um, <coughs> it was in this moment that actually black could have gotten an advantage. It's not clear to me how. Not clear to me how at all. Um, so I guess I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, and then later, oh, let's see, I had one blunder. So let's, let's look at our one blunder. Yeah, it was bishop a3, and now I know why 
uh, because I didn't understand that night G5 is working here. I just didn't understand it. I thought H6, but I did not see knight takes F7 in this position. But now that I do see it, I like it a lot because, again, after you trade everything, we just get this check. We're going to win the bishop, and that's going to win material. So, like, not only did we get the knight back or the piece back, but now they're king's weak. We're better developed. And, yeah, I don't – I would not be unhappy here. This is this is definitely – I mean, computer goes plus three. And I guess we have two points of, of material with a better position. <laughs> so, I guess that's enough for now. Um, hope you enjoyed this game. And I'll be back with more. Okay, bye.